This is a time we need to ascend. We not only need to press through. Many people want to just put their head down and press through. No. The Lord is saying, lift your head and come up hither. Not in pride. Lift your eyes to the hill from which comes your help. Every day you don't get what you've done, he showed you mercy. And it's new every day. And you dare worship anyone but him. And by him, I mean Jesus. Lord and Savior, Yahshua HaMashiach, Yahweh, the only living God. Good day, beloved, and thank you for joining me again today on Preach Be Your Voice, Not an Echo. I am Ambassador Chantro Davis. For those of you who do not know me, today is September the 25th of 2019. It is 11 40 a.m. Central Standard Time. Bring your hearts and minds together. We're going to go before the Lord with a quick prayer. Um, uh, there's no time and no space. So no matter what day this message is prayed, this word is alive and it is effective and it is always enough. So bring your hearts in, bring your minds in. Do not let time and space bind you no matter what this date says. Every day that this is heard, it will bring forth. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you that we are alive for such a time as this, Father God. Thank you for your word of truth, Father God. Thank you for your word of love. Thank you for your word of light, Father God. Thank you for revelation of your word, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Father God, in the uh, by the spirit of meekness, Father God, I pray as speaker of this house, Father God, I yield to the speaker of the house that is the Holy Spirit, Father God. Let everything in me stand down that is flesh, Father God, that the spirit man stand up, that in all things, Lord Jesus will have the preeminence, Father God, for he is higher than all heights, Father God. In the name of Jesus, fill me with the knowledge of your will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Help me to walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing to be fruitful in every good work and help me to increase in the knowledge of God. Strengthen me with all might according to your glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. And Father God, I pray the same for all those who will hear this word in spirit and in truth, Father God. Grant us the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you that the eyes of our understanding be enlightened, Father God. Awaken in us a pure heart and a pure mind that we have pure expression in you in all things, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that we present our bodies living as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable. And that's our reasonable act of worship, Father God. But take us from reasonable worship, Father God, to the worship of excellence, Father God, by way we are holy conduits and you are able to move through us to get to others. In the name of Jesus, help us to stand down, Father God. Help us to diminish while the Lord God be exalted, Father God. Let Christ Jesus be magnified in all that we do, Father God. Help us to live truly, to deal truly, and in whatever we do, Father God. Let our yea be yea and our nay be nay, Father God. Let us not move forth in hypocrisy, Father God, but to remove forth the, move forth in spirit and in truth, Father God. Help us to esteem others better than ourselves, Father God. Help us not to think more highly of ourselves than we ought to, but to think, Father God, of a lowly spirit, Father God, but with boldness according to the gifts and calling, Father God, for we are not ashamed of the gospel that is Christ, Father, Christ, Father God, and we are not ashamed of the gospel of grace, Father God. In the name of Jesus, help us by your grace, Father God, to not only fellowship, Father God, in your uh, 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 power of the redemption, Father God, but the fellowship of the suffering, Father God, that we may be glorified with you in all things. Father, in the name of Jesus, I decree that no weapon formed against us, that they will prosper every tongue rising against us in judgment is condemned. Any person, place, or thing, or entity, or action, Father God, in any realm or any dimension, Father God, that is sent forth word against us, contrary, we decree those words, null and void, Father God, let them be back into their bosom. We suffer not witches and warlocks to live, Father God, and let not evil speakers be established in this earth according to your word. Arise to our help, Father God, and deliver us from all those who are stronger than us, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Father Father God, for they reign over us in the job places and in the markets, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Father God, let your favor go before us as a, as a shield, Father God. We entreat your favor in all things this day, Father God. We thank you that you fight against those who fight against us. You contend with those who contend with us. You see the righteous thing, the great tribulation of those who trouble us. Trouble our trouble in the heavenlies. Trouble our trouble on earth. Trouble our trouble in every realm and dimension this day. In the name of Christ Jesus, Father God, we decree any person, place, or thing, or entity in any realm and any dimension that's become a yoke about our neck or a burden in our life. We decree it removed and destroyed according to your word, Father God. God. But we thank you that the gates of hell will not prevail against your church according to your word, Father God. Grant us wisdom, Father God, and understanding. Make us a quick understanding that we walk in your path, Father God. Wisdom is our sister, and understanding is our kinswoman, Father God. Awaken in us, Father God, true hearts and mind, Father God. I speak both over our mouth, mouth seasoned with grace and full of salt, that we speak right words in due season, and how forcible are those right words, and we know how to answer every man. Father, you said we have an unction from the Holy One, and we know all things. Father God, you said you would fill our mouth with your word, Father God, when we open our mouth wide, you will fill it. We open our mouth wide, that you fill it, Father God, with your right words, Father God, with your will, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father God. Let us be renewed in the spirit of our mind, Father God, that we will walk in the perfect mind of Christ, Father God, for we have that new mind, and that is Christ, Father God, and we yield to a Father 
Father God. Let this flesh stand down, Father God. Let us speak your will, Father God. We decree that our mouth and our, our tongue would not rebel against our spirit, Father God. For we, we can train our tongue, but Father God, no man can tame it. But we think that the Holy Spirit can tame the tongue, Father God. So we yield, Father God, to your right way of living and being, Father God. We thank you for your word, your spirit of truth, Father God. We thank you for your light and your love, Father God. Let it go forth over the body of Christ in true oneness of spirit. Father God, I seal this prayer thanking you, Father God, that it goes forth unhindered, unchecked by the outside force. Father God, and I seal it in the matchless and mighty name of Christ Jesus. I thank you and I say amen. Okay. Uh, I didn't did a few today. <laughs> it was an impromptu short one in the middle of this one. But these words have got to go forth. No matter what you fight, I'm pressing in the spirit, but the spirit will anoint you to do what he's called you to do. When you feel him lift, don't do any more. I've told you this before. Those of you who are ministers and you, you're preaching under the anointing, because I keep telling you, everybody's not preaching under the anointing. Many people are picking up books and ministering, but that does not mean that the Lord is with them. And that's what the anointing means. He's with you. Not everybody can preach with the anointing. That's something different. It's heavier. People want glory, but glory is weighty. That's why when people say they felt the glory and they go up, ah, 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 ah. glory take you down. Glory is weighty because he's above all. I had the funniest thing happen to me the other night. I got to get this testimony. <laughs> Look at I was praying. And they heard worship, they heard worshiping the Lord and saying, come, Lord Jesus. Because all those who are in Christ, he said, let the spirit and the bride say, come. And, and he gave me this beautiful song. Come, Lord Jesus, come, Lord, oh, come. And so I'll be singing that. Oh, come, come, Lord Jesus, come. And I was singing and praying. I love that song. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Come, Lord Jesus, come, Lord Jesus, come. And I sing the usher. Oh, come. Oh, come. And, you know, I was really worshiping. And then I was praying in the spirit. And he began to change my language. People don't understand that it happened. I, 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 well, the first time he gave me the gift of it, it was seven of them. I sung in three different spirit, uh, languages. But I didn't recognize it right off because I was so in the moment. That's so funny to me. I sound like Jerry Lewis. <laughs> I got to give it because it's so funny. You got to share this kind of stuff because it happens. And I prayed and he was coming. And I didn't even recognize, but my flesh recognized he was coming. I was just so in the moment. And so I'm still praying and my mouth is changing because I'm used to praying in the spirit. By, and so he's giving me a new language. People don't understand when he drop a new language in your mouth, that's a new anointing. Yeah? That's fresh fire. And my body was bending over against my will because I was still trying to sit on the couch and I got my hands up. And as I'm talking, my speech was being interrupted because my neck was bowing and I was, uh, you know, <laughs> and my body just kept bending and it was completely out of my control. And I realized what was happening and he was coming. And I, I mean, he, my body, I was on the couch and I could not lift up. I was bowed all the way over. And then the language he was giving me came and it was a beautiful language. And at this point, I went into worship. This is where you're trying to get. Worship, praise is praising him. Worship is where you're talking to him. It was a back and forth. I felt his word into my spirit. It was a back and forth. And I mean, I have never felt tears fall down my face like this. You ever done it? What is it? Both eyes were dripping like this. I mean, I'm not joking. You just hear me hit the couch like. That's how quick the tears was hitting the couch. And I was talking back and forth. And it was this beautiful. Ben and I. I was saying it, it was beautiful. It was very beautiful. But it was funny because my body since it even before I did because I was just so in this moment that it just bowed my even though I was sitting on the couch I could not lift up till it was done with my hands up I could not lift up till it was done praying in this beautiful language and speaking to the Lord and the tears was dropping when I tell you it had to be like 10 to 10 to 15 tears at a time just falling that is that is a whole nother kind of crime it was beautiful okay let me get into this word okay because many of you the enemy is trying the Lord is trying to heal I think about that because my husband even had a vision the other night where seasons were just changing before the water could hit it was frozen and before it was frozen it could be spring he is, this is his multiple meanings even the time compression because he's catching you up Is it? but that's something else I'm, I'm going to leave that alone I'm not going to tell all that vision because it has multiple meanings 
but he's even going to heal wounds swiftly when it would have taken long if you were really, most people won't even admit that they're still broken. They are ministering broken. They are going forth unprocessed and unhealed, which is why even though they're working, they're toiling, ain't really no fruit coming forth. It's not always the fire of redemption. It's the fire of reciprocity and the fire of disorder. You are moving wrongfully. And so that's why there's no fruit. Sometimes we're going through our perfect uh, patience having this perfect work. But a lot of times it's because we're out of order. We, we're unhealed. We're unprocessed. So you're just toiling. And the Lord is just like he's trying to bring husbands and wives together swiftly. But you got to humble yourself. He's trying to heal wounds that are healing that you've been working with that you have not allowed him to heal because you think you got to move. And he's trying to swiftly do this because he's compressing time. But you have to completely, he come for those who know they're sick. He come for those who know they need healing. He came because you have yet to throw down and say, even though there's a call on my life, I I'm not healed. And let me tell you the steps. Because just like the fall, a man don't just get given over to deceive. You don't just get, those who are going to succumb to this great de uh, delusion, this is not sudden. Again, I say, if you have not listened to the strong, de uh, a strong delusion frequency message, please go listen to it and share it. This is showing you because marks get put on your spirit to be given over. OK, he's past this point. Mark him. Now you're in the next stage. He's past this mark. Mark him. Now you're in the next stage of level of fall. He's past this point. Mark him. Then does the giving over to. And then when the strong delusion come, you're going to believe it because you've been marked for it. OK, you've been marked for it. So that's why it's important that you listen to their message so you recognize this stuff and get corrected there. So you don't keep progressing until you progress unto the strong delusion frequency. Do y'all get this? You press forth into that. Okay? And likewise, with these wounds, I'm going to speak forth. The name of this message, which I, I may alter it because the Lord has to uh, call it what he wants. And I may call it the ointment, which is the oil. The wounds, the bruises, I'm going to put that in the right order though, and the putrefying sores, spiritual septus. This is not only a physical thing, this is a spiritual state of being, just like the churches, the church of uh, uh, Laodicea, the church of Philippi, these are the spiritual states of people, okay? You have to catch that word, because I got a church of the Laodicea, with the Laodicea spirit too. It's about a body made of people, what's up on the people. You're going to fall under one of those categories, either the Philippian church or the Laodicea, because that's your spirit and that's what you're operating in. And so it's the bruises, the wounds, and putrefying sources, sores, okay? Let me read this. Spiritual sepsis. Sepsis is a life-threatening condition, and then we're going to apply this to the body, uh, which the body is fighting a severe infection. A severe infection. You don't want to get to the point of a severe infection. Let me give you uh, examples of severe infection in the spirit. Bitterness. Bitterness lets in everything else. Unforgiveness. Unforgiveness, everything else. Because this, this, when you see unforgiveness and bitterness, or shall I say unforgiveness will lead to bitterness. So unforgiveness would say be the wound or the uh, uh, bruise. Bitterness would be the putrefying sore. Envy would be the putrefying sore. Jealousy would be the putrefying sore. Hatred would be the putrefying sore. Pride would be the putrefying sore. Do you get it? The lack of correction would be the bruise. The offense would be the bruise. Uh, uh, would, would, would be the wound. See, I'm giving you an example so that you understand. When somebody says something that hurts your feeling, that's a bruise. You got to get it healed before it turns into a wound. Somebody rejected you when you came really in the earnest of heart. That would be a bruise. You have to let the Lord wipe that out clean before it becomes a wound. And then it goes into bitterness, which is the putrefying sore. I have to give y'all these examples so you could catch this and apply what a bruise is before it becomes a wound. And then nullify the wound before it becomes a putrefying sore. Because at that point, you are really in trouble because it ain't no simple fix. Excuse me, y'all. It ain't no simple fix when it gets there. That's why you have to pay attention before you get there. OK, let me get that. And you septic at that point. Septic is, is, is through the whole body. You will begin to infect everybody you come in contact with, which is why the Lord will start to sever you. You will not be able to be around. That's why I know what people I love. He calls sever people that walked away and they don't really fellowship with me. They think it's me. No, it's them. He moving people because you will become infected with the septicitis. The septicitis is a septic infection of the body. 
Okay, let me read Isaiah. I gave y'all them examples so you got to understand, so you can identify this in yourself. I told you like I did in the other one. Many want to go to encouraging ministries. They want to go and they only want to hear uh, exhortation ministry. This is where you're going into the level to where you land yourself down for Christ. You ain't even been introspected and cleansed up yet. You do not get to skip a grade because you change classrooms. You want to skip the introspective ministry that caused you to identify these bruises so that the bruises will not become wounds, so that the wounds will not become putrefying sores. You skip the introspective ministry. That's what the introspection ministry does. It makes you fit for use. You see why I teach the way I do? I have to deliver the word the way he tells me to because you can't be used no other way. Be fooled because I'm telling you right now, I know people and I can say names, but I'm not going to. Be they are operating unhealed. They are operating, even though they call themselves prophetesses, prophets, and teachers, they got wounds, and I know because he didn't show me. They are unhealed. They are untreated. They are unnullified, but they're still operating, and they fall is coming. Do y'all understand? The need to be lifted up and seen causes you not to sit still and receive the process of healing so that you don't be putrefied. Y'all got to catch this. I'm going to read Isaiah from the sole to the foot, Isaiah one verse six, from the sole to the foot, even unto the head, there is no soundness. I'm going to read what it means to be sound and I'm going to come back up to the scripture. Now I'm going to read it after I finish the scripture from the sole of the foot, even unto the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds, bruises and putrefying sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up. That's why binding and loosening in prayer goes both ways. You can bind somebody up and tie them up and cast them out, but you can bind up a wound. So you got to learn. I got a prayer on my page, y'all. Binding and loose in prayer. And it's prayed right to where it shows how to bind up devils and bind up entities and cast them. But it also shows you how to bind up wounds. You have to use that word both ways. It has two meanings. Bind up people as in top, and then you bind up wounds and seal wounds. Go find that bind and the loose of prayer. I'll make sure it too. Don't let me forget. Okay. Um, they have not been uh, neither. Uh, they have not been closed, neither bound up, neither nullified with ointment. I'm going to read it in the message version. Why bother even trying to do anything with you? When you, this because people won't, this is how you can't get healed. Introspective ministries is what heal you. Because conviction of the Holy Spirit points it out, then he nullifies it with all. But because you won't let him point it out and nullify it with all, you just work with it. You just ignore. You just ignore. Oh, I won't listen to that word. It looked like it a cut. So you you scrolling like you at uh, Arby's or you scrolling like you at uh, Burger King to have it your way. Oh, yeah, that look good. I'm going to eat that. But I don't want to eat this over here. That, uh, a grown up in Christ know I need this whether I like it or not. I need to eat these greens, this cabbage, these Brussels sprouts, these beans, even though I want to eat all the meat and cheese. I got to have some of this too. Okay. Part of growing up is eating what you know you need, not what you want. This is spiritually speaking too. Okay. Okay. Why even bother trying to do anything with you anymore? Uh, you just keep to your bullheaded ways. Hardness. Okay. That's a wound. No, hardness is actually a putrefying sore. You keep beating your heads against brick walls. Everything. Why well, you think you see people minister and minister and they still never go nowhere because they, they unhealed. They may have a call, but he didn't process them or heal them. I know that for I know that to a certainty and they don't have to listen, but I know it. OK. Everything within you. Prote listen to this. Everything within you protests against you. You are you got protests inwardly and you still ignoring it. From the bottom of your feet to the top of your head, nothing's working right. Wounds and bruises and running sores, untended, unwashed, unbandaged. Everything within you is protesting against you. From the bottom of your head to the top of uh, to your feet to top from the top of your bottom of your feet to the top of your head, nothing's working right. Wounds and bruises and running sores, untended, unwashed, and unbandaged. Listen, everything within you is protesting. From the bottom of your feet to the top of your head, nothing working right. You beat your head against the wall. No matter how you ministering, everything's still going wrong around you. Your kids going wrong. The family's going wrong. Your husband ain't came. Or either you in disorder with your husband. And nothing's going right. Year after year, there's a time of trial. But year after year, no fruit is manifested. Wounds, bruises, and putrefying sores. You need to determine where you at. Everything's protesting against you even inwardly. Because you have not been nullified with all or healed. Everything's protesting against you. 
Your life. I keep telling y'all it's the fruit of the life. That's what's going to tell where you really are. It doesn't mean you don't have moments. But you have to, you have to, you're from the beginning of your life to the end. This is how it is. Hello. If you were being nullified and treated through an introspective ministry, the wounds would be closed up and bound up and nullified with oil by now. But because you turn the other cheek, because you've been self-appointed, or even if the Lord called you, he never going to put you out there without processing you. I know people. They are working unhealed. They still got wounds. Let me read what soundness. He said from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet, there is no soundness in it. To be sound. This is the same thing that means for rebuke. You rebuke the body that they may be sound. So keep that in your mind while I'm reading this. You rebuke godly so that the body will be sound. And right here is saying you have no soundness in it. This is why you don't receive rebuke. Catch that scripture. He gave me that. They ain't even in here. Free from moral defect. You free from moral defect. To be thorough. Exercising and showing good judgment. You can watch their life. They ain't making good judgments. Everything you got on credit. Everything. That's not the Lord's way. You got to wait and do without. So we done been without plenty waiting. Because we believe God. Okay. Reflects weight and sound argument. And you are evidence that he is a God. You are evidence that he's ever changing. You are evidence that he's a transforming God. You are evidence that the right way of living and being is the true way. You become evidence for the Lord on this earth. To be deep and complete, for deep calls to the deep. These are definitions of soundness. To be in good condition, free from defect, free from damage, and free from decay. You decay away. From the bottom of your feet to the top of your head, nothing's working right. Wounds and bruises and running sores, untended to, unwashed, unbandaged. And when I make a blog, I'm going to make sure I put that binding and loosen prayer in there. Because y'all need to know how to pray binding and loosen both ways. It's not just one way. Okay? Um, the preach goodness without severity. That's twistedness. They preach love and not perfect, perfect hate. That's twistedness. They preach the lamb, but they leave out the line that's coming back. They preach the scepter of righteousness without preaching the rod of iron. They preach his grace without his holiness. That means grace will cover you. You can do whatever you want. It don't matter how you talk or what you do or if you hate people or if you're jealous or if you envy or if you're competing or if you're out there gossiping or listening to God. Even those listening to gossip. If you are on the phone with somebody and they're talking about a third party's business, that's gossip. You will fall under the curse with them. Don't take that in. Okay? That's why I know that's why people don't call me. I don't gossip and I'm not going to receive your gossip. They like to be with, talk to people who will who will oblige. They preach deliverance without discipline. Hello? You preach deliverance without discipline. You want that devil out of you a pornography, but you fall in booty Instagram models. You want to stop smoking, but you go on where everybody smoke. You don't want to smoke weed, but everybody, you going around your family and they blazing in your face. You preach deliverance without discipline. You want deliverance, but when the Lord tells you to fast, because sometimes the devil in you, it ain't the people casting out that need to fast. Sometimes the person that wanted out of them got to fast. Once you decide that you don't want that no more, you fast. So when you go to them to pray, your body's fasting, so that devil ain't got no strength. Preaching deliverance without discipline. That takes discipline to fast. Causing you to stray from the tried and true way. Because you follow people who teach what you want to hear rather than what you need to hear. You go listen to what you want to hear. That's why it will go from bruises to wounds to putrefying sores. Where are you? The spiritual sepsis, sepsis that is going forth. Recognize when you got a bruise. Because you took offense to something somebody said or didn't say. Or somebody that didn't receive you. Maybe the Lord didn't want them to receive you. You never look at it the other way. Maybe they were going to contaminate you because they proud. Because of who they think they are in him. Because they're contrary. Because he knows that even though they're preaching, the food of their life is telling on them. Maybe that's why he didn't let them accept you. But you can't see that, so you take that offense. And every time you see them, you feel something in your heart. Every time one of their messages scroll by, you feel something in your heart. Reco I got to give y'all these practical examples. Recognize it. Every time a word pop up or somebody else mentions them to you or ministry, you feel something hurt. That is a wound or it is a bruise. You need to go before the Lord. 
It would be a bruise first. They didn't knock you a little bit. Like a bed sword. All of a sudden it opens. Then there's a wound. It ain't been bound up. It hasn't been closed or nullified with ointment. How's that? By way of the word. Introspection. Deal with it. Yeah, I was wounded by that. Take this out of me. Yeah, I'm living contrary. Kids out of gravity, out of order in my house, disrespecting my husband, or, or thinking I'm over my husband, or thinking because I'm a prophetess or prophetess that they're going to come in and line up with me. Upside down this. Them are bruises and bruises. It leads to disorder. Let me read Isaiah in the message version again. Why bother even trying to do anything with you? This is where it's at now. When you just keep with your bullheaded ways, can't nobody tell you nothing because you self, even y'all operating in ministries. I'm telling you, I know y'all working with wounds. Some people are working with unhealed wounds. And you are filtering, I hear you, Lord. You are filtering the word of God through your wounds. Ah, let me, uh, uh huh. This is on me. You are filtering the word of God through your wounds. Let me give you an example. Somebody at your job just offended you. Somebody at your house offended you, and maybe you was arguing over what should be watched or what should be worn, or whether you should wear makeup, or how you should wear your hair. And then you keep getting messages on that. The Lord ain't giving you the messages. You're delivering that message so they can hear it. You are filtering the word of God through your wounds. You are filtering the word. So you minister based on what you see or what offended you or what somebody else said or what somebody else did. All of a sudden, there's a word from God on it. Examine yourself. This is for somebody. Your words you are delivering are through wounds. You always end up with a message based on what you saw, based on what you heard, based on what somebody said, based on what somebody did to you at work, based on how somebody talked to you in a, in a grocery store line. All of a sudden, you got a woe word. Filter through your wounds. Ah, through your wounds. Ah, Lord had a preeminence in this word. Have the preeminence in this word. I stand down. I ain't got to stay on course of scripture. Have the preeminence, Lord. Say what you're going to say. I'm a vessel in the name of Jesus. Understand, it's a bruise. Then it's an open wound. And then it's a stinking, runny sore. You are septic. Why do you want more beatings? Well, let me go back down here. From the bottom of your feet to the top of your head, nothing's working right. Look at your life. Nothing's going right. Not your kids. Your husband won't come. Everything out of order. Every, and I mean, I don't mean times of pressure. This is all the time. Okay? Wounds and bruises and running sores, untended, unwashed. You just going on, ain't paying no attention to it. And you're festering, unbandaged, gaping, and you're still working. Hear this word. Let's read Isaiah 1 and 3. Why should you be stricken anymore? Some of y'all on your last round. Y'all gonna keep hearing this. You're on your last round. He putting good people in your life. People that'll rebuke you. People that'll tell you. People that'll correct you. This is your last round. Why should you be stricken anymore? Ye will revolt more and more. I've witnessed it. I know I said what the Lord said more than once. I heard from the Lord like you. Straight got pushback. And he said don't say nothing else. Whole head is sick. And the whole heart is faint. Message. I'm reading the message version. Isaiah 1, uh, 1 verse 5. Why bother even trying to do anything with you when you just keep to your bullheaded ways? Same thing over here. You keep beating your head against the brick walls. Everything within you protests against you. Your life is telling on you. Everything within you is protesting against you. And you still won't turn around. Everything is going wrong and you still won't examine yourself and lay down. You still won't sit still and only and sit still till he turns you down. It's many on your last round. You're going to revolt more and more. Recognize the bruise so that the bruise will not become a wound. So that the wound will not become an open putrefying sore that you won't then become spiritually septic. You are infected. And those who are infected. Will infect others. What did I tell you on the word he said? By the end of this, you're going to fail. You're going to have life through connections. Life by association. Or you will have death by association. Many of you got to watch it because people are about to go septic. Catch this word. Many are septic now. 
Many, you got to watch this. They are they have putrefying sores. They are septic now. And when they are septic, everybody connected to them will be infected. So you have to make sure you don't connect to a septic person. They have unforgiveness. They have pride. Can't tell them nothing. They have bitterness. And their life is telling on them. Even their own life is telling on them. And they won't stop. They're septic. You don't want to connect because there will be life by association and death by association. Do not be connected to a septic person. And I know many of them, they're going for the ministering word and everybody, amen, and on that channel and they are going septic. Many people, I heard, many people have thousands of followers because that's infection. It's infection. It ain't it ain't growth in exhortation. It's infection. Oh my God. This is infection. And y'all look at it like it's godliness. You got to know when you have a wound, a bruise, or a putrefying sore. What I tell you, a wound can be an offense. Somebody may have said something that just hurt your feelings for that moment. If you don't tend to it, it will become a wound. And if you don't tend to that, it will become hatred. It will become unforgiveness, which are gaping sores. They are putrefying sores. Unforgiveness is a putrefying sore. Bitterness is a, a well, unforgiveness it would be the open wound. The putrefying sore would be the bitterness and the strife and the hatred and the pride. Them are putrefying sores. Offense is a wound. If you don't deal with it, it will become a putrefying sore. And that's an infection. You're going to be in bitterness. Y'all better catch this word. This is now. Which are you under? Catch this word and lay before the Lord. Okay? Receive correction and be healed. This is Proverbs 19, 20 through 21. 19, 20 through 21. Hear the counsel. Hold on. Let me see. I'm going to make sure these people ain't beating on the door. like people beat on the door when I'm ministering. Hold on. Okay, that ain't mine. Anybody sent me nothing. <laughs> Let me go. Uh, receive correction and be healed. Proverbs 19, 20, and 21. Hear the counsel and receive instruction that thou mayest be as wise in the later end. Receive counsel, receive instruction. There are many devices in man's heart. Many people got all kinds of ideas, brainstorming. The Lord leads me. I don't got to brainstorm nothing. When he say, get up and do this, that's what you go do. Sit there. When you brainstorming, you, you in your own reasoning. That's not him. He gives you what he wants you to do. I don't have to come up with that. Okay. There are many devices in man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord. It is the counsel of the Lord that should stand. Only his counsel. Seek his counsel. Don't make your own way. And many of you can't recover your soul because you have to acknowledge the wrong. What's acknowledging the wrong? The wound. Or not acknowledge the offense. Acknowledge the jealousy. If you have a jealous thought, acknowledge it. The enemy is stuck at that, but many of you ignore it. You just say, I ain't never jealous of nobody. I ain't never competing with nobody when the evidence is that you are. He gets many like that. Just like many act like, oh, you ain't never had a homosexual dog. I know y'all lying. The enemy will put a thought in your head. And the reason many people fall into that is because they don't throw it down. He said, take every thought and lead it away captive and teach it to submit to Christ. Because the enemy's throwing it at you. And if you don't, if you don't cast it down, then you're going to end up acting it out. And once you act it out, you have partaken. He throw all kind of crazy. I'm like, what the, where did that thought come from? I read the devil is a lie and pull it down. He's throwing them. Every thought ain't yours, but many people won't say nothing because they think the thought stirs. He's trying to get you to take that thought, saying, take no thought, saying. He's trying to get you to take it and say it. Just because they entered your head don't mean it's your thought. That's the devil. Pull it down. Being religious. I ain't never had an unclean thought. I ain't never had you. The devil's a lie because he's throwing it at you. We all suffer the same things. Some of us pull it down and some of us don't. Some of us ignore it and act clean when we're filthy. And some of us just throw ourselves on the mercy and say, clean it out. That's the only difference. That's the only difference. Okay? And he said that when you acknowledge, when you acknowledge your wrong, you recover your own soul from the enemy. Where are these wounds? Where are these bruises? Where are these putrefying sores? On the soul. Acknowledge your sin and you recover your own soul from the snare of the enemy. I ain't even put that scripture in here, but that's the scripture. You can look it up. When you acknowledge your own sin, you will recover your own soul from the snare of the enemy. So the bruise that he's put on you, the wound he's caused you to have, you will recover your own soul by acknowledgement. 
Okay? Confess your transgressions one to another that you may be healed to one another. Okay? When you know you done did somebody wrong, you know you done lied on them, you know you presumed against them, you know you spoke against them, you know you gossiped about them, you know you received gossip about them, all that stuff. Confess your faults. That's a fault. That's, that's a fault you have. You're always running over people. You try to control people. You try to think. If they don't think how you want them to think, you, you cut them off. You act rude. That's still a fault. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man of better done. What did that tell you? When you have not confessed your fault and went to your brother, he said, if you got an honor against your brother, go and make it right before you even come before the Lord. So you, you have not even confessed your faults. What did that tell you that you are? You could presume against somebody, think wrongly against them. Uh, wrong. I, I'm telling you because I can't tell you how many people didn't assume wrong about me. Thought ain't even into my head. Straight got lied on by witches and they turned on me like snakes. But what you got to understand, I, I got to use myself as an example. I can't be sitting there worried about nobody apologizing to me. Some people will never come because they that hardened. They will never come and acknowledge they wrong towards you. But what you got to do is make sure you ain't holding them. I'm only bringing this up because I have to use this as an example. The Lord know I ain't thinking about that stuff twice. I forgive. But I have to use examples so that you understand. Now let's get to the anointing of the oint, the anointing ointment. And you can find some of these. It's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the anointing. You apply the spirit to these wounds and he will tell you, this is what you're touching. This is what ain't healed in you. This is pride in you. This is arrogance in you. This is jealousy in you. This is strife because it come in many ways. And I'm telling you, people are, I didn't, people say over and over again, they ain't got it. And I know what I'm looking at. It is jealousy. It is competition. It is comparison, which is why some people don't even come around you. It's a, it's a jealousy. Boy, y'all, y'all better start dealing, getting real. That's why you don't deal with them people. Some of you won't even go around because their life has convicted you. You go find this in Exodus 30, uh, 23 to 25, uh, 1 John 2, verse 27. Uh, uh, it's compounded. I'm going to put this in the blog because this is just some thorough stuff for you to study in your own time. When John says the anointing teaches you all things, that means... It's going gonna, it's gonna to teach you where you're wrong and where you fall short and where you're not healed. Tell you when to sit still, tell you when to move. I'm going to put all that in the blog for time's sake. Okay. In 1 John 2 and 27, but the anointing which you have, the anointing which you have received of him. And that means you have to be been baptized with the Holy Spirit. That is the anointing. Meaning he resides within you. He's Lord over you. If he abides in you. And God, I got to say this. Being baptized with the Holy Spirit don't mean that you're anointed to preach. When I say everybody not preaching under the anointing, even if you've been filled with the Holy Spirit and he has not sent you to go do what you're doing, he's not with you. Y'all got to understand that. He can be in you and not with you because he didn't tell you to go do that. Many of you going to do your own thing. You're going out there doing it because other people are doing it. You want to be seen on the street because other people are seen on the street and he ain't told you to do it. He's in you, but he's not with you. And you need him with you at all times. Which means only do what he tells you to do. Not what somebody else press on you to do. Because you need preeminence. Don't let nobody dream you at your grace. Because he's in you, but he's not with you. The Lord said, he said he would never leave and forsake. He said, me never leaving and forsaking him is not the same as me being with him. With, you, with means he's in agreement with you. Means he's standing right there with you. He's not. He will turn his face away from what you're doing. When he didn't send you. And when it's contrary. And ye need not that any man teach you. This does not mean you don't have leaders and teachers. That means he going to inwardly be witnessing to you even as you hear the word. Because all we're doing is sowing seed. Oh, I caught that. All we're doing is ministering the word. Somebody else may water it, but the increase comes from him. That's the teaching. The understanding of even what I'm saying is the Holy Spirit teaching you. Catch this. The understanding of what I'm saying to you is him teaching you. Not that, you know, because I've seen people. And everybody know who they is, that he, the, the Holy Spirit said, you don't need no man to teach you. So I'm a prophetess or a prophet, and I don't need nothing said to me, because he said that when you had the Holy Spirit, you have need that no man teach you. That is not what that meant. You ought to sit under that word and receive, and the understanding of that word is the teaching of the Holy Spirit. Catch that! Because I know many of you who won't listen to nobody else because you say you're a prophet or a prophetess or a teacher because you said you have no need for nobody to teach you because you had the Holy Spirit. That's not what that means. That means even the word that he's revelating through me, 
He's the revelation. He's the giver of this word and he is the elaborator of that word, which means he's going to give you even understanding of what I'm saying. That is the Holy Spirit that teacheth you according to the scripture. The anointing teaches, it instructs, y'all like that, but it sifts and it corrects. It teaches and it instructs and it sifts you and it corrects you and it rebukes you. It chastises you. It sets orders and paths. Then it brings forth the healing and it nullifies wounds. But you have to go through the teachers, instructs, sift, because you have to hear instruction that you repent. How do you think the word says that therefore that they will receive instruction that they can be granted, that they may be granted repentance? So you have to read and receive instructions first. That's the teaching. The teaching and instruction, the teaching and the instructions that I give you. Then it's correction. These are the nullified, that, that's how wounds are nullified and healed. But when you think you know, you can't be healed. When you think nobody is supposed to teach you but the Holy Spirit because you, you have received that word wrong, you can't be healed. When you got pride that you won't acknowledge. When you got jealousy you won't acknowledge. Which is why I'm telling y'all, that's why many of y'all don't go around other people. And if the people are good to you, they pray for you, they love you, but you stay away because their life is convicting you. So therefore, you don't deal with them much. When the Lord sent them to bless you and elevate you. This is for somebody. Some wound, uh, some wound treatment requires rest, hello, and not movement. But you always feel like you got to go. I told you, I gave you the example. Why he had sent me to give a, a message to a woman of God who was moving and operating and trying to move for Christ, and he had not released her to do so. And the Lord literally spoke to me as a cut. You know, if you got a cut in the crease of your hand, and how many of you have had a crease right there on a the knuckle, and every time you move, it rips open. And he said, she's moving. And re-whipping the wound. Many of you are opening wounds because you're moving. Many of you never got healed because you had wounds of your family, your mother, your brother, your father, people that hurt you in church, ministers that lied to you, stole from you, uh, slept with you, and you just never got healed. You start moving. Even though you say you forgive them, you, you have not. Because you immediately started moving in the things of the Lord because that's your that was really you trying to deal with your hurt. And your moving is a rip. Your moving is a rip. Your moving is a rip. Every time you reach that hand, that knuckle split open. Every time you reach your hand, that knuckle split open. And that's how it's been for some of you from beginning to end. The bruise, which was the misuse of the pastor or the leader or the friend or the mother or the brother or the sister, unhealed, became a wound. It's gaping. You kept moving, which keeps the wound open. And now you are a putrefying sore. So many of you are moving forth in your life in bitterness and unforgiveness and strife and jealousy and envy and pride. Even ministers, woe preachers, uh, I could call names all day and will not. Hear this word. Be healed by the spirit. Sit still and let him point out every ugly thing hiding in you. Because he will have to sever people from around you. Because if they connect with you. That septicitis will hit them. It will be death by association or life by association. So he will have no choice but to cut good people. And these are good people. He will have no choice but to cut them out of your life. Because you refuse to be healed. The ointment of the Holy Spirit. The wounds. Well, shall I, I'm going to say it in the order he said. The bruises. Because that's what it is first. The wounds. And then the putrefying sores. The spiritual sepsis. Okay. Make your calling and election sure, and it will never fail. Okay? Uh, this is Jude. Hold on. What did I cut this out of? Lord, I think I cut the top of the scripture off. Wherefore, the rather, brother, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do things, if you do these things, you should never fail. You should never fail. For so an entrance, for so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. A call to persevere. Jude 1, 20 through 21. But ye, beloved, bidding yourself upon your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourself in the love of God, looking for the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And we already know if you obey, it will be well with you. Jeremiah 7 and 23. But 
This thing commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and you will be my people, and, and walk ye in all my ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well with you. It's only well when you obey him. The path means an established way of travel and access. Acknowledge him in all your ways, and he directs your paths. That means his absolutions are always, but the details of your walk will change. The absolution of his word is always, but the details can change. That's why this pearl plats one way, paths multiple. Where would he have you this day? You may be ministering this, this year. Sit still for a few months. The paths is an established line of travel and access, which means if you are off that path, you are out of timing, out of alignment, out of order in the darkness. Get back on path. Pray. Sit still and let the Lord speak to your heart. This is a word from the Lord. You have to understand where you are. I gave examples. Listen to this uh, message in its entirety. And the rest of the scripture, which I always put in the blog, I will put in the blog. But this message is the bruises, the wounds, and the putrefying sores. Which one do you fall under? Take heed. And be corrected through rebuke and sound word, introspective ministry, that your bruise do not become a wound, and that your wound don't become a putrefying sore, that you will become septic, and he will have to sever those from around you that are good. He will have to sever good people. He will say, he will have to take good people out of your life because you have become septic, that they don't die with you. Take this word before the Lord, beloved. Grace be with you, and I love you all. So into the good ground of preach be a voice, not an echo, yet only as you have purposed in your heart. For God loves a cheerful giver. The truth, the truth of the word of God. Word of God. First Corinthians 9 11 reads, if we have sown into your spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? Give only with purpose and cheer, for we desire fruit that will abound towards your account. We thank you for all of your support, seed of your time, seed of your prayers, and the purpose seed of your gifts. To give, visit our YouTube channel and click on the PayPal logo or go directly to PayPal using the following links or email preachbvne at yahoo.com. To listen to more messages and for the latest updates and offers, visit www.preachbvne.webs.com. Also view messages on the YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash C slash preach be a voice, not an echo ministry. Also like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Do the work of an evangelist. Watch it, then share it. Beloved, we wish above all things that you will prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Grace be with you. Thank you for joining us today on Preach, Be a Voice, Not an Echo. We pray that you were encouraged and empowered by today's message. Until next time, we encourage you to hang on to God's unchanging hand and preach. Grace be with you.